Hello there. Now, due to the support of my Movies in Lego video, which I did post two weeks ago, don't worry if you haven't seen it, I'll leave a link at the end of the video. But due to the support that video got, I decided today, two weeks later, almost two weeks later, I think, that I'm going to revisit the pyramid and switch it up. And instead of doing iconic movies, I'll be doing iconic Disney Plus shows. Now, originally, this was just going to be a series video until I soon realized that all of the series I were doing were from Disney Plus. So I decided to feature it around Disney Plus. Perhaps if there are some really cool looking shows with some amazing graphics on the other streaming platforms, then I can always revisit this. Definitely let me know down in the comments what other movies, TV shows and other pieces of visual content you'd like me to represent. Perhaps I can even touch on one for the comic because comic art styles are really, really impressive and that'd be amazing to see in Lego. But today we take on six Disney Plus shows. Three of them will be Star Wars. I'm trying to mix it up, including some others, including Percy Jackson. And the non-Star Wars ones will be covered first because I'm sure that is probably why you clicked on this video. But before I get into it, yesterday's video did have me going out and buying the new minifigure display. You voted on it two months ago. I finally come through on my promise and managed to pick it up. I really had to, especially if I'm looking at a new desk and other things. I can't pick up anything else till I grab that. So I think it does look amazing. Of course, you'll have let me know down in the comments if you did watch that video. But if not, definitely let me know what you think about it in the comments of this video. And I'm not sure what comes across better on camera. If it does look better on or if it looks better off because you're not getting the glare from the LED strips, especially because my camera is positioned lower than the frame. I'm not really sure which looks better. So I'll be playing around with it over the next few videos and hopefully we find a nice balance between having it on and off. Perhaps if I turned off the other lights and just had that glowing, it would look amazing. But I also noticed that my camera was freezing. So I do apologize if that's happened again today. I really don't know what that is, but I am getting that sorted as soon as I can. And I think that's everything covered. So before we get into looking at the first of the six series represented in Lego, which they do look really cool. Definitely drop a like on the video if you end up enjoying and subscribe for more awesome Lego content and so you don't miss out on all the other future mocks built here on the Master Moldy channel. Thank you so much for all your support recently. We are getting so close to 1,000 subs. Don't forget, 1,000 subs, I will not only be showing off a brand new desk, but in fact, the entire Lego room, the first time you'll have seen it here or anywhere else for that matter. And I'm so excited to show you some of the new changes that perhaps aren't as obvious as the LED display. So definitely hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. And thank you to everyone else who's already shown their support for the channel. Anyway, let's get into the first series, which is actually Percy Jackson, because I haven't seen anyone else do that. So this is perhaps the first Lego Percy Jackson mock ever created. And for Percy Jackson, I have decided to represent the scene towards the end of the show when I'm not going to spoil any of these shows today, so I can't tell you exactly what's happened, but if you've read the book, if you've watched the series, if you've probably even watched the old movie, I don't remember the movie, but I'm sure there was some reference to it in that towards the end. It sets up quite nicely for a second season, which with the reception of the show, I'm pretty sure at this point we're getting, and you may recognize that torso used for Percy Jackson. Let's take a look at Percy for a second because this is Lo-Fi Girl's torso. Now, I mean, it can be used for so much. It's a nice green shirt, and I've actually used the legs as well to represent a shorter legged jean. Of course, Percy Jackson is quite young in the series and definitely looks closer to the book age than in the movie. But this is, well, we call her a Lo-Fi Girl because it's the CMF figure. I think it was the horse jockey. There was a young horse enthusiast in one of the not so recent, recent CMFs. And I use the torso and legs for Lo-Fi Girl because I quite like the pattern shirt. And once again, we are pulling them apart. No horses here. I probably could have used the horse as just a creature in the background of the forest, but we are only limited to an eight by eight plate. I know originally my bad batch, I think was 10 by 10, but for the movies and the shows, I tried to make it an eight by eight so I can cram a bit more into a tighter space and I think Bad Batch was spread out a bit too much. I am a massive fan of this leaf element. If you saw my first Bad Batch season three mock, you know I really like creating different displays with it. And we've got a few piles of 
I'm not convinced if they're piles of leaves or if this is meant to represent some mossy floor or perhaps a bit of the grass in the forest. And the leaves for the trees, I mean, the leaves, the branches, I really like how they just come together at the top. And I've rotated every other leaf just a little bit to the right than the left to try and bush out the tree. And I really like how they've come together. I've also told off and added these one by fours to all of my displays today. Well, except for the top one, but the top one on the pyramid doesn't really need any connection points. But once again, the other five can be connected in well, any way you choose to connect them, which is very, very nice when it comes to building pyramids, because if you want Percy Jackson higher up, then you can definitely include that in your own. But I'm gonna whack Percy to the side for now, as we are taking a look at the second display, which actually comes from X-Men 97. And it is the iconic moment where Cyclops, it's early on in the show, but Cyclops is taking down some people in a warehouse and he does this really, really cool slide with, I think he actually uses his lasers to sort of propel him across as well. So you can see there is a broken bit of the wall where he has lasered through just to the side and you see all the rubble and that just on the floor. And then I've got one of the laser elements as I did in my custom minifigure building when I built all of the X-Men without using any official X-Men pieces for their own minifigures. And I've got that laser coming out. That's what's propelling him, I guess, to that diagonal. And then just a bunch of these red four length bars, these saber elements from Star Wars, because we get so many Darth Vader's that I've got a bunch of these coming out to the side to represent that nice swoosh. I know the Black Series have actual custom pieces for these blurred lightsabers, and it would be nice to get one of them for Lego, especially with the mechs. We could have got alongside the lightsaber piece, an actual blurry lightsaber piece. If you're a fan of the Black Series, you'll know exactly what I am talking about. And there's some other collectible Star Wars figures that come with that. The warehouse is pretty simplistic because in all fairness, in the episode, it does look pretty straightforward. So there's not much I could have designed there. So I spent so long, I actually spent the longest on this. And considering there are some very simplistic wall techniques <laughs> implemented here, like the bottom two and the middle two rows of bricks are identical pretty much half the way around. And then of course we've got these nice little slopes and little gaps in the wall in the middle there. But I spent so long on getting these bars at somewhat of a correct angle. I don't think it's perfect. There's definitely more that could have been done to try and angle them off to the side. So perhaps I'll keep workshopping that after this video, but I think it's as good as I'm gonna get. So that is the second little modular block as you can see the walls on the outside besides a little gap where the rubble's breaking through do look quite simplistic compared to the trees from percy jackson which we can take another look at it does look a bit more complete on the outside but the third and final non-star wars modular block before we get to where the fun begins is actually from a national geographic series which takes you to the world of bugs and it's basically Bugs Life, but real life. I mean, the title really does say it all. And for that, I have created this leaf cutter and I have created it in black. I would have loved to use some sort of dark brown or perhaps not even dark brown, but this darker brown you can see on these trees in the corner. But I just don't have any of the pieces, specifically these pieces I have used for the leg. Hopefully because it's black, you can see it somewhat decently on camera. But I've used a lot of the frying pan studs to create the legs, given them awkward angles that other Lego bricks just can't get to. Of course, it's carrying that giant leaf, which is made out of a bunch of different leaf elements to try and give it that complete shape and make it look not as thin as the original one. Of course, we've got a few ragged edges where the leaf has been cut out of its original leaf. And I've actually used some of these brick, these one by two brick elements to create a bigger brick texture because of course we're scaling down this to the size of an ant so this isn't even micro this is the opposite this is sort of a macro mock i'm pretty sure that works out so i've included four of these bricks to make a bigger brick because we've got this massive leaf cut here it's also got that little white eye on the side and i think overall it's turned out pretty well i definitely think there are some better elements that Lego could custom make if they ever go about making a leaf cutter around this size. But of course, 
Lego would most likely just blow it up and make it a bit easier for themselves than I have now. And now this is where the fun begins because we're getting on to the Star Wars mocks. We'll take a quick look at the bottom layer of our pyramid before moving on to the next two on the layer above. And I think it's coming together really well for now. These are three really, really fun series. And you've probably already heard about Percy Jackson. You've already been watching X-Men, especially if you're a fan of my Bad Batch videos, because I've seen a massive overlap in them communities. And if you haven't checked out A Real Bug's Life, definitely give it a watch. It's on Disney Plus, so if you do have a subscription, you are able to watch that for free. And it's just an amazing show if you're interested in insects or even animals in general. Now, with a brand new animated series, speaking of X-Men 97 and Bad Batch, we're getting Tales of the Empire in May. That's going to be its own video, and if you haven't seen already, I've already done a pyramid for Bad Batch, and I really wanted to include an Ahsoka modular block on this, but really the one I'd do is Ahsoka on the T6, and I already created that when Ahsoka was coming out. In fact, I've even done a pyramid, as I mentioned at the start, on movies that will be in the end screen. So if you're interested in the Bad Batch or Ahsoka builds, they are both playlists on my channel. Definitely give them a watch. But I've decided to go with Towers of the Jedi. As I said, Towers of the Empire will have its own pyramid, one based on every episode. So from Towers of the Jedi, as I only had one block, I had to pick one of the six episodes. I'm a massive Ahsoka fan. And I'm afraid I didn't pick any of the Ahsoka episodes. I just don't think I could build them as cool as they come across. So I've gone with one of the Dooku episodes. Specifically, I'm pretty sure it's the first one when he's with Mace Windu and he's trying to protect... I think he's trying to protect a small rebellion against some form of people or perhaps he's trying to protect the people against the rebellion. I definitely need to give it a watch before Tales of the Empire. But it's a really cool scene where Windu and Dooku ignite their lightsabers they're in a much less dense forest than Percy Jackson. As you can see, Percy Jackson has a lot of leaves and the trees are quite uniform and straight up. Whereas for Tales of the Jedi, there's the odd yellow leaf and this orangey one right at the front of the camera. But besides that, there's just not really much. There's not really a muddy floor. It's more of a dirty, dusty floor, which is why I've gone with black. Perhaps I should have gone with dark bluish grey, but I was already using it for two of the mocks, so decided to go with black to match up to the X-Men 97 and I guess keep some continuity between the pyramid. But I'm a big fan of this custom Dooku. Windu is the exact one that came with the Grievous Speeder, I believe, which was based on one of the unreleased Clone Wars arcs that we never ended up getting. And of course the trees are just these one by one round bricks or two by twos piled on top of each other with the odd stud and leaf breaking up the pattern. But this Count Dooku uses Ki Adi Mundi's torso and legs and then a recolor for the arms. And I'm pretty sure, I can't remember, no, the head is Snap Wexley's from The Force Awakens who, if you don't know, does show up in the Aftermath books and is a really, really cool character, a bit younger in them books. And then I've used the hair piece. Originally it was going to be Wolverine's, didn't look quite right. So I've actually used the hair piece from Phoebe's painting from the Friends sets because I didn't end up including that in my modular mocks that I created for my Lego City. So I'm very happy with how Dooku ended up. Of course, we've used the Asajj Aventurous lightsaber hill, which gives it that nice curve because I don't own an official Dooku minifigure. In fact, I've only made a custom one from Attack of the Clones, so this is my second custom Dooku figure, and I'm really, really liking this one. Of course, after this video, I have to give Kiedi Mundi the torso and legs back, but I'm so debating buying the torso and legs and creating this custom minifigure to add to my collection. Now, this will be going on the next level of the pyramid, so as you can see, we can just connect it up here using the stud pieces, and even though the trees look fragile. I guess the trees that you're worried about are probably the ones on the Tales of the Jedi level. But even though they do look quite fragile, they are holding up pretty well. And I have tried this whole pyramid and it all holds up. So even the Tales of the Jedi trees hold their own way and a little bit extra compared to some previous pyramids that were unable to hold their weight, let's say, because I got way too carried away and made it a bit 
too big. But going on to the next Star Wars show, we have another new one and well, Tales of the Jedi isn't new, but of course Tales of the Empire was and that was mentioned. Going off that, we have got the trailer for Acolyte and I haven't built anything from it. I am very, very excited for Acolyte. I think I'm more excited for Tales of the Empire because of the stories they are telling. But from the Acolyte trailer, we have this scene where one of the Jedi are being attacked by some sort of mysterious character wielding two knives and they're in this rundown. It looks sort of like a wooden shack, but it being Star Wars, I'm pretty sure it's going to turn out to be some sort of metallic building or at least look a bit different to a typical wooden shack because I have to add this alien spin on anything. So the attacker here is built using, I think it's one of the pirates from Mando. We don't get a good look at the face, so I've just flipped it round and given, I'm not sure if it's a hood piece or if it's hair on the character, but I've given a Jedi hood to it just to cover up that mysterious face. And for the Jedi, we've actually got Kenobi's torso and legs from the Kenobi Starfighter set, the Delta 7B that we got recently, and Ray's head and hair because I think Ray's hair isn't too accurate to the character perhaps, but it does a good job of representing who I want it to be. I've added some details as well in the back with these rounded off bricks and accessories. And of course, had to include the really cool looking windows that have these slats in them and don't look like they're held together very, very well. So this is my representation of the scene. Of course, as always with all the other mocks, like when I built the ship, from the only image we have still got from Skeleton Crew. I think we've got a trailer, but I'm pretty sure I haven't seen any other exclusive images. I might be mistaken, but I can't wait for both Acolyte, Skeleton Crew, Tales of the Empire, all the other shows that we're waiting to get. I'm pretty sure there's going to be more from Mando, from Ahsoka. I wouldn't mind seeing more from Boba. And now speaking of Boba, it's the perfect time to add the Acolyte display onto the pyramid. And move on to the final build because a year ago well when this video goes out a year ago tomorrow i built my first lego official set review on the channel and it was boba's microfighter if i can find the short i'll whack a few images on screen for you now since then we have come a long way most recently reviewing the coruscant guard gunship which if you don't have is a lot, lot bigger than the Boba Microfighter. Now, it's definitely one of the biggest sets I've reviewed on the channel, but I didn't just want to include the Boba Microfighter, so I've made a few modifications for this scene. As you can see, the scene in question is when Boba's flying over Tatooine in his ship. I originally wanted to create the scene where he's being sort of attacked and mauled by the Sarlacc, but there just wasn't enough space to include it all. It made the pyramid top heavy and would just fall back like my last one. So in order to improve, I've gone with the scene where he's chasing down the speeders. As you can see, I have taken his helmet off underneath and given him Commander Cody's face because that's definitely the face he was pulling when he was gunning down all the speeder gang that ruined the Tuscan village. And the biggest modification I have made to this build is actually the cockpit piece that I've used. If I lay this down so it's not wobbling as much on camera, you can see that the cockpit I have gone with in the end is actually the rounded one that you're probably more used to seeing on ships like Kenobi's Delta, for instance. And there's been a few other recolors I've done. You can see on the side, some of the dark green has become gray where it's probably worn down over time and a lot of the painting and different colors that were present on it before have been removed and swapped out for mostly gray pieces. Some of them have been change to green or other colors and I think it definitely does give a good look to the slave one at this time. On the back I've included this clear brick element, this modified brick and what that allows me to do is to secure the starship to it and then whack it down on this plate. Now there was a big problem with sets around this time because it was called Boba Fett's starship. The reason behind it is Boba never refers to it or at least as far as I know Boba never refers to it as the Slave One. It's more of what his dad called it. So it does make sense that it's Boba's Starship, a bit more accurate than Boba's Slave One because it's mostly just referred to as a fire spray. Even when he mentions it in the comics, it's just his fire spray, which he does end up upgrading at some point in Legends. But either way, it does look really, really cool. And I'm very happy with how this turned out considering it's just 
a plate with a micro fighter attached onto it, but I definitely like the new cockpit piece. So we are going to position this on the top level of the pyramid. Hopefully I don't knock it all down. I've not had too much success with one-handedly connecting the pyramid whilst the camera's rolling, especially if you've seen my movies video. But now that we've got the whole pyramid done, you can see it is one of the taller pyramids we have created and that glare in Boba's starship is quite annoying, so I'm not sure how we can get rid of that. But I am very, very happy with how it turned out. Taking a closer look at each one again, we have one of the final scenes from Percy Jackson. We then have the now iconic Cyclops slide, which honestly was awesome. We have a giant leaf cutter and from A Real Bug's Life. We then have one of the most interesting scenes from the Acolyte trailer. We then have Windu and Dooku from Tales of the Jedi. And last, but most definitely not least, Boba in his starship gunning down the Beda gang that destroyed the Tuscan village. So let me know what you think of this down in the comments below. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Do let me know by dropping a like if you did enjoy it and subscribe for more awesome content. May the bricks be with you always.